um yeah so you, you're good to go yeah sure yes, so um, yeah so i'll yeah, start your time now okay uh good morning everyone praise god and thank you pastor and uh, for this opportunity to share god's word and it's really nice to have uh, uh, classmates as uh, the audience <laughs> i'm really glad about that okay what i would be sharing on is uh, on the topic of grace so that is something that i think all of us have experienced right from the very beginning of our walk with god and uh, so i would like to uh, touch on is there other ways when we can miss out on that grace in all the uh, beauty and glory of the way that it has been given to us and what is it that we need to do so that we can really walk in the grace that uh, he has called us to so the first some things that we'll be sharing of course it's all familiar to all of us but anyhow i'll just go over that so what is it that comes to mind when we say grace undeserved kindness unmerited favor uh getting what we don't deserve whereas on the other hand mercy is not getting what we deserve and peace is oneness with god if we look at uh, scripture especially after the church was established almost all the epistles begin with grace and peace be to you uh, from god the father and the lord jesus christ so this is something that we need to draw from in great measure every greeting mentioned that let's just look at since when has this grace been with us second timothy 1:9 says this grace was given us in christ jesus before the beginning of time but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our savior jesus christ who has destroyed death and has brought life and immort immortality to light so it has been given to us from the beginning of time but we understand what it is because of the appearing of our lord jesus he personified all that grace is about i'll go a little more of uh, some more scriptures which are again familiar what does it do ephesians 2 9 8 9 says for it is by grace you have been saved by faith and this not of yourselves it is a gift of god not by works so that no one can boast we have been saved through grace by faith another uh, a, a little firm scripture invariably when we talk about grace it's kind of okay you can do anything you want and you be put that thing and say okay it's a grace of god and sometimes in jude it says that it was a license they use it as a license to do almost anything titus 2:12 puts it very beautifully it says it teaches us to say no to ungodliness worldly passions and to live self controlled upright and godly lives in this present age that is an amazing scripture it teaches us to say no to ungodliness worldly passions while we wait for the blessed hope the glorious appearing of our lord and savior jesus christ and another one which is so familiar and so comforting and strengthening that his grace is sufficient for us and his strength is made perfect in our weakness no matter where where the weakness lies in whatever area there's always a fresh supply because that is what he has said my grace is sufficient and second corinthians 9 it says and god is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things and at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work so that's again a bit of the background so we'll just quickly look now as is it possible to miss out on all this that the lord has given is there are there things that we sometimes miss out on doing or there are things that we can better do so that we can avail of this james 4:6 says god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble what is it that we are proud of is it there could be different things Uh, maybe our knowledge or our qualification maybe our position maybe sometimes it could be even our spirituality so god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble 
knowing that everything that we receive is but by the grace of God. Maybe it will give us a right perspective so that we can receive more of his grace. First Corinthians, Paul says, first Corinthians 15, 10, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect, not in vain. Why? I've worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. With me. So we could miss out or not avail as much as we can if we are laid back, if we are lazy. Uh, so because scripture says, whatever we do, we do with all our heart as unto the Lord. So let's, and uh, Peter again says, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness and uh, knowledge, self-control, love. Make every effort. One more uh, scripture that I'd like to look uh, like us to look at, Jonah 2, 8. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. When we say idols, and I'm sure all of us, I mean, we don't, uh, it would not be literal idols that we would be looking to or bowing before. But if God is not our God, then there are chances that that can become an idol. What do we think of when we go to sleep? What is it that we think of when we awake? Maybe that will give us some kind of an idea if there is anything in that region. So now I will go into what do we do? Uh, that how Paul has told Timothy, beautiful instructions that he has given him, which we can uh, really learn from and uh, apply. He said, uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 1, he said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He's asking us to be strong. How? The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. So whatever we are receiving, learning, teaching at any given point of time, now it is in a, in a proper way, in a, a college setup, even otherwise, whatever we learn, are we able to and trust, we have to be able to entrust it to others. Uh, so they in turn will be able to share it to others as well. That is one. The next is endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And to explain that, Peter, I just looked at Peter thing. It says, it is commendable if a man uh, bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he's conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it, this is commendable before God. It's a tough call, uh, this, this enduring, endure hardship. But a very important part of our uh, walk with Christ and for which we again need the grace. Then it goes on to say, those a few verses uh, below that, no one serving as a soldier gets involved in the civil affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Sometimes we are so busy with the nitty gritty of everyday life. Doesn't mean that we refrain or uh, uh, you know avoid our responsibilities, but are we constantly in that grid of, okay, going on and on in a routine? Said, no one serving as a soldier gets involved. I'm talking about the emphasis being on involved. We don't keep on doing uh, those things alone. Then similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. If you look at any athlete, I'm sure, I mean, many of us might be having, uh, yeah, people whom we look up to, there's so many wonderful sportsmen out there. How do they arrive at what they do? You know, their success and their ability to do and, you know, all those accolades that they receive. I'm sure we can all uh, relate to that, that it would be a, a terrific routine, morning and night, maybe when you're up or sleeping, it's constantly, that is what they are focused on and working. And they do all this to get a crown that will not last. So we need to compete according to the rules. Then it goes on to say, I think uh, Paul says that how he beats his body and brings it under control. But all that happens only to get a crown that will not last. So towards uh, the last one is the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive. 
which means that um, he has to be able to partake of that. Whatever he is going to be, the farmer is not a celebrity like the soldier and uh, athlete and all of that. He just has to work hard and, uh, you know, he will not probably get any recognition even, but he would be the first to receive. He will have to be able to partake. He will have to receive from the word himself before he can give it out to others. So how, so let us all decide to be strong in the grace of God. And how can we get this grace and peace in abundance? It says, grace and peace be yours in abundance, the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Um, that is what I wanted to share. And I just end with a quote. Oswald Chambers says, to prepare for anything, uh, even for a, to share um, something. Or can I, time is up, but you can, yeah, complete that. Yeah, just, I'm just closing with the quote. Yeah. yeah. To take on the most difficult task, maybe even hard work or, you know, ability is enough, but to be a saint 24 7, you need the grace of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for presenting that. So you've titled it Perspectives on Grace, right? Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add a a couple of more um, like uh, perspectives, meaning um, uh, I think I, I think it's I guess it's not uh, time is not enough to you know add those two perspectives also, but uh, grace being a divine enablement and grace being divine character, right? You touched upon unmerited favor, but grace being divine enablement and divine character as well. So, yeah, uh, thank you. Okay, right. Um, okay, so we have Rinchen next. Okay, Shivakumar is also ready. Fine. So Shivakumar can present after after Rinchen. So is Rinchen there? She is. Okay. Rin, are you ready? You ready? Okay. Um, just check your mic. Check. Can you guys hear me? 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 Uh -huh. um, My mic. My mic. Okay. Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. Um, so, Rin, have you logged into two accounts? Maybe that's what. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, now it's fine. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'll start the timer now. Right, ten minutes. At the end of ninth minute, I'll put a message on the text. Right. Okay. okay start. Your camera is not on yet. Okay. So um, good morning, everyone. <laughs> so um, today I'll be talking about um, um, I, my my topic is um, like what you do when God does not respond, and the title is um, when you get no response. So um, so today, uh, yeah. So we'll get into that. So um, the thing is, uh, we uh, like we all are gonna come uh, and we all go through in life where um, we are believing God for something, uh, when we are trusting God for something, and um, and uh, and we feel like God is, God might not be hearing us, God may not be answering our prayers, or that um, or that our faith is not working or we have to do something more or um or that i mean we might be having like all these questions like is god really there we might be uh, starting to doubt about god's um faithfulness and um 
his um, uh, if he's like doing anything, if he's working. So I mean, like uh, when you feel like in life, uh, when God is not doing anything, when God is not working, when you feel that way, I mean, that is a time when um, that is a time when we have to check. Like, are we uh, doing the small things that God has uh, wanted us to? I mean, like to do his will every single day. I mean, like, even uh, if we go to, um, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, it talks about where um, Saul meets, uh, sorry, where, yeah, where Saul meets Samuel and um, uh, where, uh, yeah, and uh, he is going to be anointed as a king of Israel uh, by Samuel. But before that, Saul is asked to do something small, something um something not so significant and um and and says in uh, verse three uh one day kish donkey straight away and he told saul take a servant with you and go look for the donkey so saul took one of the servants and traveled through the hill of ephraim okay and um mm, Okay, yeah, so in this story, yeah, you, so you'll come across there uh, where Saul will ask, um, uh, where, sorry, where Samuel will ask uh, Saul to uh, do just a small task in order to just see if he uh, can just do this small little thing. And, um, and uh, so by Saul just doing that thing, I mean, like he is, uh, he is later obviously anointed as king of Israel. And, um, and so even though uh, even in life uh, we can um, uh, so there are things where God just wants us to do the little things in our life. I mean, um, if you want to um, know, um, if you want to see God's um, answer to our prayers, or if you want to see God moving in our lives, I mean, we just have to um, do the small things that that oh. He's asked us to do. I mean, like Elizabeth Elliot, like she said, just do the um, just do the next right thing. Just do the next thing that um, that we that we've got to do, and uh, you'll see the results. And um, and uh, like uh, in God's word, where it says uh, to never cease in prayer, to uh, continue uh, steadfastly, to not give up, and also God has promised us in His word. That um, in Matthew twenty one verse twenty two, uh, where um, if we believe and if we ask in prayer, we shall receive it. I mean, uh, we can continue to stand firm on God's promises, just knowing that God will still remain faithful. God will, um, God hears our prayers, and that He um, He will not fail us. I mean, uh, there is a right time where he will answer. I mean, the Kairos moments in our lives where God will come and intervene and work in our lives. So, uh, yeah, so the takeaway today is uh, just continue to trust in God. Even when you feel like God is not responding, God is there. He is working. Even when we don't feel like it, even when we are not able to see that God is working because he is there. He is working. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, you have lots of time left, so if you want, you can. Okay, um, thanks, Ren. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, one aspect that I felt that you could have added is, um, of course, scriptural examples and also um, some illustrations, uh, specific illustrations, right? So. Okay, uh, so that that always brings out the message. Like even though it's a it's a, it's a it could be a short message, uh, a scriptural um, or, or a, you know personal or even an everyday example of how uh, you know what to do. Now this is this is something that is uh, you know there's a struggle for most people, right? Most believers. So um, a really relevant everyday example. Okay, this is what I face, but how do I overcome it? Um, you know, if there are some strong truths um, and and the everyday, you know, things that uh, challenges, if those are kind of uh, explained, that would really um, 
yeah that would really help right so just wanted to share that okay so um, so shiv kumar is ready yes first uh, yeah, yeah just one second i, I just see uh, nina's questions so apart from divine enable um uh, divine character divine character divine enablement and of course uh, unmerited favor um those are the three aspects of grace um okay okay uh, so shukmar you if you are ready then yeah you can unmute switch on the camera let me know when you're ready and then i'll start the timer yes pastor i can start first okay so i'll start the timer yeah okay. go ahead praise the lord everyone my name is shokumar uh, today my sermon topic is honor your spiritual leaders so today we'll fo uh, our focus will be on understanding the need to honor our spiritual leaders and hindrances in honoring them and in various in some of the ways how we can honor them let us read one scripture first thessalonians uh, fifth chapter verses 12 it says like this dear brothers and sisters honor those who are your leaders in the lord's work they work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance so many of us in our uh, spiritual life we have struggled sometimes in honoring our spiritual leaders or sometimes we are surprised that uh, the way the spiritual leaders are getting honored or we may think that how come spiritual leaders are why we are why we need to honor our spiritual leaders so much so scripture has answers for all these things so first we'll see why we need to honor our spiritual leaders there are five reasons to honor our spiritual leaders number one they watch out our souls and gives account to the lord hebrew 13 17 it says number two they work hard among us first thessalonians chapter 5 verses 12. number third reason is they guide us in our spiritual journey uh, in the first thessalonians 5 12 we come across this number fourth uh, they teach us the word of God, Hebrew 13, 7. The fifth reason is they are the authorities kept over our soul by God, Romans 13, chapter 1. Let us assume we are a teacher by profession and our students start disrespecting us or they are not listening to, listening to us. Does it sound good to us? Definitely no so we need to honor our spiritual leaders because it is our primary duty as well as our responsibility and also it is the best way in which we can return to our spiritual leaders for their labor now let us see what are the hindrances to honor our spiritual leaders there are many factors which hinders us in honoring our spiritual leaders the most common among them is the pride scripture says in first peter chapter 5 verses 5 god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble and proverbs 16 18 says the first step to destruction is having a prideful heart so a prideful person is unprofitable in the kingdom of the lord god cannot use a prideful person and thus it makes him useless in the hands of the god so let us not boost ourselves about our talents about our knowledge wealth power skills etc instead humble ourselves before the god and our spiritual leaders and honor them wait for the appropriate time surely god will bring us and lift us in his appointed time uh, one example i can tell you is in one of my friends church a second line leader rose against him and he created a lot of disturbances in the church 
and ultimately he left his church and started his own ministry without the approval of his pastor this has happened because the pastor has given him a full freedom and he has given him a full uh, uh, authority to do things and all so that might have brought a pride in his heart and led him to go against his uh, his pastor and in uh, uh, in the uh, scripture if you see though joshua led the israelites to the promised land and elisha though doubly gifted than the elijah when we see uh, uh, jesus christ uh, uh, when he uh, goes on to the mountain we can see moses and elijah over there not the elisha and joshua so this confirms us one thing always gurus will be gurus so the uh, students whatever excel they uh, they excel in their, their spiritual journey still we need to honor our spiritual leaders those who helped us in our spiritual journey now let us see uh, what are all the ways in which we can honor our spiritual leaders there are so many ways in which we can honor them uh, one is we need to love them first thessalonians 5:13 Second is we need to pray for them, and it is good in the eyes of the Lord. First Timothy chapter two, verse one to three. Third is we need to support them financially. First Timothy five seventeen. Fourth is we need to follow them and invest in their joy. Hebrew thirteen seventeen. Fifth reason is we need to protect them from the uh, church members or the community whenever they rose against them. Uh, Second Timothy chapter four, verse fourteen to seventeen, and sixth reason is we need to help them in ministry to lessen their burdens. Acts six, verse one to four, and the seventh reason is we should not judge them. Romans fourteen, verse four. Matthew uh, chapter ten, verse forty-two says, and if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. If a simple gesture of giving water to his follower can reward us, think how much more God will reward us for honoring His servant. So we need to honor our spiritual leaders. One of the key ways to be blessed or honored in spiritual as well as earthly life is to honor our spiritual leaders. Let us understand that humbleness before God and our spiritual leaders open the gates of blessings or honor for us so let us be watchful for the opportunities to honor our spiritual leaders thank you yeah thank you shukma shukma did you put it together just now because you said the topic was not ready uh, actually i had this i had this topic uh, i have prepared a sermon pastor but i was uh, Uh, working on uh, uh, the better one so okay. since uh, at, uh, today i felt like say, let us present this one itself right right so thank you thank you for sharing that that's a uh, uh, very um, yeah very good topic and very useful one and also quite a you know a controversial one in the sense in the light of today's you know scenario church scenario Uh, you know a lot of questions why you know uh, when considering the character considering the abuse um, you know that might be there and then you know people still you know ask why how, how. Uh, i just felt one thing that um, that you know like instead of putting together a whole lot of information in 10 minutes uh, what would have been really useful is um, like for example the biblical base for honor that you shared right um yeah. there were four points or four or five points and uh, taking time to really uh, you know go over the scriptures uh, you quoted the scriptures but taking time to go over the scriptures um would have helped and then maybe one other point you know like what is the practical way to do it i think those two points would have covered the 10 minutes uh, sufficiently and you know with the personal examples and illustrations that would have really help yeah so i just wanted to share that okay thank you okay thank you. Thank you. right thanks okay so okay i throw it open to anyone 
okay you who puts their hand up first either in person or uh, okay shira fantastic <laughs> shira you have a lot of fans here everybody's uh, applauding you <laughs> okay okay shira you can go ahead and uh, i hope that's why you put your hand up no to share yeah good morning boss good morning good morning uh, you're ready to share yeah boss i'm ready to share okay come on am i audible boss um okay i'll start the timer now <coughs> yeah go ahead please uh, good morning everyone it's me chira and uh, my topic sermon topic is right choice will bring god's blessings and my sermon title is choice so in our daily life we have every day we have choice what to choose or what to not what to do what to take or to not in the morning when we wake up we have choice will pray or not and or will pray or will just uh, go for our blessing no like every day in our life we have choice but right choice will bring blessings to our life and wrong choice will delay our blessings in our life or in one hand we can say that in our wrong choice will be you know take us into so far from god and one more thing is when we take took a uh, wrong choice it will take us into the, some kind of curse in our life also so when we see in the bible there is one example very good example i, I found when we see david's life so here when we read uh, uh second samuel 11 2 to 17 and all then after 12 11 to 12 so when we read about david we see here like one evening he was walking and he saw bethsheba right she was like taking bath and that time he had choice like when he saw that uh, bethsheba he had choice can i cons- consistently i saw her or i'll remove or i'll take a choice to avoid her so at that time suddenly when we read bible we saw that one of the ro- wrong choice he made there and he saw and he what he did david that he uh called his servant and he asked who is she like about her he asked and what david did he did one wrong choice there he did miss uh, one wrong choice and he slept with bets over right when we read bible we get that so what happened after that when we read uh, same uh, second samuel 12 there we see like you know second samuel 12 11 to 12 and uh, second samuel 13 1 to 11 and 11 to 15 we see like something happened to david's life and after that we know the stories what happened like uh, everything but one thing i can like focus here is because of his one mistake when we read uh, like uh, 13 1 or uh, sorry second samuel uh, 12 11 to 12 there we found that jesus said no true prophet because of his mistake what he will do that he will do something and something happened there and again when we see tamar and absalom you know because that uh, what david uh, because of his one mistake some very thing um, so many thing happened there and then because of his one choice one wrong choice so many thing happened in the bible so our one choice will it take us into the blessings and same way our one choice will take us so far from the god so my topic and my point is we have to take right choice through the guidance of god and one more example i want to focus here from the bible when we see the life of jona right life of jona also he god tell him to go in way and he he run from into the thirsts means god called him and god told him to go in way and he run after the lord and he took one wrong choice there and what happened his blessings and his time become delayed so our one more point is because of our wrong choice our blessings and our time our will be delayed 
because of our wrong choice. So it's happened to Jonah's life, right? The best example we can see from the Bible, the one right choice will be taken into higher blessings or one right choice will be taken close to the God. It is Joseph, right? When we see the Joseph's life, right? Joseph's life, he took very good this, uh, choice in her, his life. When we see, right, Joseph's, what happened? When we read Genesis 39, 1 to 2, and Genesis 37, 7, 8, when we read Genesis 39, there we, we see Potiphar's one, right? The wife of Potiphar. Big, like, uh, temptation, big uh, problem, big situation come into Joseph's life. But what he did, because of one thing, he was very good to God. His, his relationship is very good to God. And because of God's guidance and because of his uh, relationship with God, what he did, he took a right decision there. When Patifar's uh, wife, he, she tried to do something wrong with him, right? He ran away. He knew after that so many things will happen in Joseph's life. But what he did, he, he took like a uh, risk there, right? So he, what he did, he ran from the situations. When Patifar's wife uh, asked him to do something wrong, when we read Bible, we know everything. He, 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 he asked uh, Pati, uh, Joseph to sleep with him, right? But what he, uh, what Joseph did, he ran from it. When we see, he took a right decision, right, in from in front of the eyes of God, and he ran from it, Joseph. Or and he ran from it. Then after what happened in her life, in his life, he put into the prison and all. But it's all like because of his right choice. In the, after one day, God take him higher. What happened when we read that uh, that verse, like Genesis thirty one? We see because of his uh, one good name, God took him and make him the minister. Right? We see the my point is because of his right choice what he did there and because of God guidance was there because of the good relationship was there with God because of main po my point is the right choice he run and what happened God took him higher so today my point is we have so many choices in our daily life so many choices every uh, second and uh, every time we have choice so whatever in our life something happened or when a choice come like what to do we have to ask we have to pray to the lord and through the guidance of god we have to take the right choice in our life and if our relationship through our good relationship with god god will help us what to choose what to not so one point is like the relationship will have the relationship with god it will help us to take the right choice in our life because God is there in our life. So now, for example, in my life, if something happened, now what to do? I will go to, uh, into the ministry or I will go to the, uh, go to out with friends to Rome. It's choice, right? Every second and then we have choice. So if God is with us, if God guidance, if God's guidance is with us, if our relationship with uh, God is very good, if it's good that God will help us to take the right decisions. And in every time, and second point is, in every time in our life, whenever choice come in our life, we have to pray and ask to Lord and we have to take that decision. Suddenly, if we'll take uh, by our, our talent, by our imaginations, by our thinking, if we'll take uh, the cho uh, wrong choice, it will take us, sometimes it will take far from the Lord and sometimes it will take our, ble it's not, if blessing is on the way, it will take like far, delay. So our right choice will take us into uh, blessings and our right choice will take us into the little far from the God and uh, delay from the every blessings in our life. So this is my topic. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Right. So thank you. Thank you, Chira. It was good. Um, yeah, so the, I, I guess there was uh, there's one point throughout, right? Is that to make a good choice and um and how to um uh, yeah uh, so w one of the things you can add when it comes to choice is um like two things i was just thinking of one is uh to be led by the spirit right so you, one is you you emphasized on relationship uh, with god you have a close relationship 
you and because of that relationship you you know one turns to god and asks uh, him at every you know at every juncture where we need to make the choice yeah the the other thing is that um, you know because of romans 8 talks about 14 to 16 that you know we are led by the spirit of god so to make the choice to be led by the spirit to continually you know be led by the spirit and uh, the other thing was uh, that if our mind is Uh, renewed to the word of god you know sometimes it's difficult to choose um when it's when it's a choice between what is good and bad it's uh it's a you know it's an easy choice in the sense you know what is um you can discern between what is good what is bad but then if the, if it is a choice between something that is good and something that is better you know and then what is god's will in that then uh one needs to be led by the spirit right you know and and put of course our mind also being renewed to the truth of god's word knowing the truth so so those are some things that you can add to it but um yeah thank you thank you for sharing that okay good to see you chira for a long time thank you master yeah okay um okay so i think we have about four more minutes so i think we'll stop here we had uh, only <laughs> no half now half later <laughs> you didn't put your hands up fast enough so anyway so we have seven people who shared today um so tomorrow uh, first hour again you know we'll we'll take some time and then we'll just dive right in um and then um, but we may not be able to do the second hour because i think there will be uh, your regular classes okay so we'll do it um, uh, first hour tomorrow okay thank you god bless Bye.